Hi everyone, I'm Holly from Hand Printed and today I'm back in the Hand Printed studio as you can see, which is really exciting. So today I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to making a batik on cotton. Batik is a technique where you use layers of wax and dye to create designs on cloth. Here is an example of a very abstract batik that uses lots of abstract patterns and textures to create a vibrant cloth design. To start, you'll need a wooden frame and some cotton. So this is one of the cottons that we have in the hand printed shop. And this is a wooden batik frame. But you can use a wooden picture frame or something like that that you've got hanging about. I've pinned on my cotton reasonably tight with some silk pins. You can use drawing pins too if you like. You want to make sure your fabric is kept away from the table. So having a frame with a little bit of depth is absolutely perfect. I've got a wax pot here. This is my Tixol Malum wax pot with my tools heating up in it. I've got it set to about six on the dial, which is perfect. We want it to be nice and hot, hot enough to penetrate the fibres of the fabric and get our tools nice and hot without being any risk. I'm going to show you a couple of the different kinds of tools you can use. One of which is a chanting, sometimes called a canting, and they look like this, or they can sometimes look like these ones. It's basically a little metal pot with a spout and a handle. And that's like a little teapot. It's going to let a bit of wax out of the spout onto the cloth. You can also use brushes to paint your wax onto the cloth, but you need to make sure they're natural fibre, otherwise they'll melt in the wax. So the first thing that I need to do is put down a layer of wax. The wax is going to resist the dye from getting underneath it. So any wax that I put down now is going to preserve the white cloth underneath for the whole time that I'm making my batik. So I've got my tools and my wax up here. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to have my tool in my right hand. I've got a wad of kitchen paper in my left hand. I'm going to pick up my tool, pop it straight into, the, into my hand. Be careful because it's really hot. And I'm just gonna run the tool around the edge, just creating a little border. So the tool goes straight from the pot into the wadded cloth in my hand. That's to catch any drips and get any excess from the outside. And then we're going to run around the outside. Some jantings have bigger spouts than others, so they'll run a little faster. Try a few and get used to them and see which ones you like. So now I can start drawing with my wax. It's important to keep returning to the wax with your tool because you don't want it to be too cool. You should be able to see here that the wax is darker. If at any point it looks white or it looks pale, the wax is too cold and you need to go back into the pot. Now the first layer of my wax is dry, it's ready to dye. The wax will cool very quickly on the fabric and so you'll be able to dye straight away. Here I've got my materials ready for dyeing. I've got some Procyon dyes and I've mixed these up in these pots already. These are Procyon MX dyes which are cold water dyes for natural fibres like the cotton that we're using. They come in powdered form but I've mixed these up already. Half a teaspoon of dye to 50 millilitres of water. In order for these dyes to be fixable on fabric, I've made a chemical water and that's this jug here. And in here, I've just got five teaspoons of urea, which is a color brightener, two teaspoons of soda ash, which is the fixative, and one teaspoon of Calgon, because it's a hard water area, with half a liter of water. I need to mix my dyes here with the chemical water. As soon as I add the chemical water to the dyes, it's going to start the life of the dye and the fixative only lasts for a couple of hours. So I want to keep them separate until I'm ready to paint with them. I'm going to start by using a pipette to take a little bit of lemon yellow. I want a nice vibrant green. And then I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise. This is a really strong dye, so I need, only need a few drops. Give it a swirl to see the colour that I've got. I'm going to top it out with my chemical water. I want at least the same amount of chemical water as I have dye. It'll look stronger in the pot than it does on the cloth, so give it a swirl around to see the colour. Or you can get your brush and test it 
on a little bit of cloth or kitchen paper. I can now paint my dye under my cloth. You shouldn't need to go all the way to the edge with your dye. Let the dye spread on its own to reach the wax edges. I want a slightly different shade of green for my background and in order to achieve that I'm just going to adapt the colour that I've made already just by adding a little bit of royal blue. I'm also going to add a little bit of my golden yellow just to warm it up a tad. There we go, so I've got a much darker, dirtier green. Make sure it's fixed and now I'm ready to paint with it. So now I've got my first layer of wax and my first layer of dye down. Before I do any more layers, I need this, dry, this layer to dry completely. Ideally, I'd leave this overnight and do it the next day. Or, if you want to speed things up a bit, you can give it a bit of a blot with some kitchen paper and dry it with a hairdryer. Now my batik is completely dry. If you're drying with yours with a hairdryer, make sure to keep the hairdryer on a cold setting and keep it moving. If it's too hot, then the wax could melt, which will ruin your lovely crisp lines and cause problems for the next layer. So now that it's completely dry, I'm ready to go in with some more wax. This time, rather than using a chanting, I'm going to try using a brush. So remember, we have to use natural fibre brushes and I want to put it in my pot to heat up. I want the bristles to go nice and soft. When the wax touches the fabric, we want it to look nice and dark. If it looks pale or white, then either your fabric is too damp or your wax is too cold. I'm gonna keep going in and out of the pot with my brush to make sure it's fully loaded with hot wax all the time. I'm not going to wipe off my brush on the edge of the pot. I'm going to go straight from the pot to the fabric and avoid drips by using a piece of cloth underneath. You can get some really lovely brush stroke marks this way and keep it really loose and expressive. You can also try all kinds of different wax application techniques and have a lot of fun with it. One of the things I like to do is to do some splashes with the wax. Be careful though, as the wax is very, very hot. This wax is going to preserve the color underneath it. So anywhere that's covered in wax can't take any more dye. So it's going to stay these original colors. Any wax I put on over the top can only get to the fibers that are still open. As you can see, I've started with quite pale colors and it's a good idea when making a batik in layers to start off with pale colors and work to stronger, darker colors. This batik is just going to be two layers. So I've started with some paler greens and I'm going with, it, going with a nice strong color now. I know that that strong color is going to be strong enough to cover over these colors in the background. It's also going to make all those colors pop. You need to think about the colors you're layering over the top of one another as the colors are translucent. So whatever's underneath is going to show through. For example, if I went in with a pink now, the green is going to show through. They'll mix and make a brown. I'm going to use this royal blue for my next color. So this is my dye powder just mixed with water. And this is my chemical water, same as before. So I've got a nice, strong, dark blue here. I'm going to paint this colour over my whole design and I don't need to worry about going over all my leaves because the wax is going to preserve the colour underneath. So there we have it. I've got my first waxing with these white lines and my border. The first dye colour filled the leaves in with this bright green and the background in with this slightly earthier green. My second waxing was these big rough paintbrush strokes and the blobs. And then I just went over with some royal blue. You can see that the royal blue is mixed with the green in the background to make a dark, dark green. And that dark colour has really made the whites and the pale greens pop. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you have great fun making your own batik. Please let us know if you have any questions. Happy printing or batiking.